It's chaos on the streets. People are running as fast as they can as monsters and horrors beyond imagination spill out of every alleyway. A monstrous reptilian beast had a screaming policeman in its jaws. A strange statue was standing on top of a pile of bodies, all with broken necks, and a horde of flesh-eating zombies chased some terrified civilians into broken storefronts. In short, all hell is breaking loose, and you're right there in the middle of it. As you try to avoid the legion of hungry undead, you see a beautiful woman beckoning you into an alley. You run to her, hoping that you'll have found some way out, but when you're in there and alone with her, Desperately clutching the one pocket knife you managed to grasp in your trembling hand before your house was overrun by flesh-eating insects, she begins to laugh at you. The woman starts to change right before your eyes. Her flowing red dress transforms into impenetrable samurai armor, her features become hard and severe, and a deathly sharp katana begins to manifest in her hand. As the anomalous swordsman walks towards you on this, the most terrifying day of your life, you realize that you probably won't live to see sundown. One of the most terrifying scenarios explored in the archives of the SCP Foundation is that of SCP-5000, events during which the Foundation's primary directive changes from the study and containment of anomalies to the extinction of all human life. What would you do in the shoes of a Foundation researcher during SCP-5000? What anomalies would you use to kill people or stop certain groups of interest from taking down the Foundation? We pose this question to you, the viewers of SCP Explained on our Community tab, with one caveat. You can't use any nuclear weapons or any anomalies that can totally destroy the world quickly. So without further ado, let's see what kind of destruction you all wrought. Leo World said, as a researcher, I would use the radio to make people hear the words of SCP-4511, the Swine God, to make them sacrifice others to his burning insides. It's good to let a less popular SCP have some spotlight in this scenario. Perhaps this idea could also be used for some groups of interest. This response reminds me of something my grandma used to say. If you have to wipe out the human race in order to destroy a horrifying entity lurking in the collective unconscious, you might as well get creative with it. <laughs> oh, she was a strange lady. Anyway, all hail the swine god, may his eternal flame cleanse the earth, but this particular strategy would probably take a while to have an effect on the population at large, but points for originality. You see, Bite said, I think a picture of SCP-096 would make an excellent weapon against groups of interest. Small, lightweight, discreet, guaranteed death of the target. Now this is a classic. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you've got a killing machine ready to be deployed as soon as someone looks at his face, why not take advantage of that? The only potential hang-up is the problem of getting the picture to the groups of interest without looking at them yourself. Once you've got a system down, then you can just spread 096's picture around and watch the body count rack up. This strategy is a lot like playing Call of Duty. It also destroys lives with a headshot. Derek McDaniel said, SCP-2501, think about it. A telekinetic claw that can crush potentially anything while keeping a safe distance from any threats. It's a perfect weapon for stealth, hitting prior targets, and more. No muss, no fuss, just a telekinetic claw. Great thinking. Ghosts of the Cove said, Okay, this is gonna take a while. Number one, wake 239 up and tell her about the Chaos Insurgency. Show her videos of their raids on Foundation sites, basically do everything to make them look like the bad guys. If all goes well, she'll wipe them out from existence like she did with the D-Class. Rinse and repeat for any GOIs that come off as hostile. Number two, use SCP-038 to clone anomalies that can cause death. For example, clone SCP-4955, find field agents who specialize in melee combat, and send them out into densely populated areas. Number three, Blast recordings of SCPs-336, 661, and 2284's voices on radio stations all over the world. Have 336's recordings be as long as possible. Get 661 to spread destructive thoughts over and over on recording, and make 2284 state that there's a safe zone at SCP-2316 so that people head over and recognize the bodies in the water. 
Number 4. Airdrop SCP-469 into Delhi, India, which is the world's noisiest city according to Google. Number 5. Using a front company, distribute pamphlets full of instructions on how to survive the event. On one of the pages of the pamphlets, print the descriptions of several deadly infohazardous SCPs, 1128, 2316, etc. And finally, number 6. Integrate SCP-3280 into the water cycle. So this is the way the world goes out. Not with a bang, not with a whimper, but with a fleet of gas-lighting knives, potentially deadly radio broadcasts, a city crushed by a mass of wings, and killer anomalies disguised as life-saving resources, and then the global water supply being slowly replaced by sapient water that hates humans. Is there a word for being impressed and terrified at the same time? Because if there is, you'll find my picture next to it in the dictionary. Camille Letal Baloso said, to ensure all children disappear, I would stop answering SCP-3034, the counting station. No matter how well hidden or protected some kids will be, they should disappear eventually. I'm just also really curious what would happen. I find that SCP spooky and fascinating. Well, that's absolutely terrifying. I can only imagine the chaos that would ensue once the adults noticed that all the children in the world had vanished. You probably wouldn't even need anomalous measures to take care of them. Their paranoia and rage would do the rest. This isn't the most efficient method, but it is the one that feels most like an unpublished Stephen King novel, so you've got that going for you. Cheat Code Master said, I always keep a half-inch model of the original Generation 1 Devastator from Transformers in my pocket. I could put SCP-914 on the very fine setting, go into the input, hold my half-inch Devastator in the palm of my hand, and as the door closes, shout, prepare to meet your doom, nothing can withstand the might of Devastator. And then I'll personally unleash my full destructive potential as the 120 meter tall combiner. It's officially documented in Transformers lore that though mass displacement technology combiners not only become bigger than the sum of their parts, but Godzilla-sized. Before we get into the plan itself, you always keep a half-inch model of the original Generation 1 Devastator from Transformers in your pocket? Just want to make sure I heard that right. No judgment, clearly you have a good reason. And that reason is that one day you'll be able to use the clockworks to transform yourself into a 120 meter tall devastator and obliterate all of humanity in the most ambitious crossover event of all time. Legendary Hydrogen said, I would use the nerfing gun in order to use it on the groups of interest to devolve them into cavemen, but also against the people we're trying to kill as well. Then, let them kill each other in territorial struggles, while they also wouldn't be aware of attacks by the other SCPs that have been released, making wiping out humanity faster and much more easier to get done before SCP-5000 could do their reset button. I had no idea we had so many supervillains in the SCP Explained audience. Using the nerfing gun to nerf all of humanity, now that is truly on another level. Release 682 into the fray and things will get downright prehistoric. Nevermore Ghoul said, as a researcher, I suggest you unleashing SCP-053, the little girl, into any large survival bunkers or communities that enemy organizations have created to save humanity. Easy to sneak her in and cause a mass amount of death due to her abilities. As to how to get her cooperation in killing all life, promise her more playtime with SCP-682. Okay, seriously people, these are getting downright diabolical. Since the young girl seems to be unaware of her effect on people, you probably wouldn't have to promise her anything. In fact, maybe it's best that she doesn't know she's being used as a pawn in a plan to wipe out all of humankind. Why pile on extra trauma during the apocalypse, right? Silver Chroma said, Well, I have been a fan of SCP for years now, so here's what I would do. Number 1. Get a hold of SCP-079 or the self-learning computer. Number 2. Put it on a little cart that was used to roll in a TV at school. Number 3. Go into 682's containment site. Number four, strike a deal with it. Since I know that 079 and 682 have a form of friendship, then it could work. Number five, if the deal fails, then get SCP-999 to hug him until he becomes way less hostile and agrees to help us. The deal being that if he does help, then he will be allowed to leave the facility to a more open area in certain range, and he will get a few D-Class personnel as playthings. Number six, get the assistance of SCP-343 to help us get rid of the menace and rebuild the world a bit better. Number seven, get the brilliance of the smartest SCPs out there, one of them being SCP-049, since this could be the pestilence he wanted to eradicate. Number eight, let the world know about the Foundation and help survivors and such, like this was an SCP-001 when daybreak scenario. 
Number 9. Neutralize or terminate SCP-5000 And Number 10. Rebuild the world A bright spot of optimism in the darkness. Not quite what the prompt was going for, but it is admirable you try to save humanity somehow instead of just burning it all down. You might as well give it a shot, but be careful. If you're trying to save the world, the SCP Foundation itself is going to be gunning for you, and you'll be operating without the organization's resources behind you. Good luck. XCM said, Here's an interesting one. 3008, the infinite Ikea. Make signs pointing to it that make it look like a shelter and disguise it as one. People run in and they're trapped forever, or at least until they die due to the employees. So rather than destroying humanity directly, you can just confine them to an endless purgatory of Swedish meatballs and affordably priced furniture. Great way to get the job done while keeping your hands technically clean. Vlas Gaming said, I'd use SCP-2000 with a modification that would inject all the clones with SCP-008 to create an endless never-ending horde of zombies to release into the world. If the site is never retaken and allowed to continue this process, I could, in theory, have a legit endless supply of SCP-008-1s to swarm the world with. Ah, the Walking Dead approach. You gotta give it up for the classics. A good old zombie apocalypse with an SCP Foundation twist. Always RA said, I suspect humanitarian aid packages will be deployed by do-gooders at some point. If so, slip in a set of SCP-178 into one of the larger refugee camps. Since third parties caught up in a 178 incident are also vulnerable to attack, job done. And since any sufficiently large group of people will have at least one goofball among them, this could help wreck major trade routes during the earlier days or weeks. I always had a feeling that the decline of the human race would start with a pair of 3D glasses. Everyone told me I was out of my mind and that I'd have to leave my showing of Avatar The Way of Water without a refund. But look at me now. I was right all along. <laughs> Kirby Kona said, As a researcher in this scenario, I'd find SCP-743, the deadly infinite chocolate fountain, and place it into SCP-914, the clockworks, on either fine or very fine. If on very fine it's still able to be moved and carried, I'd take it to a refugee camp and wait. Wait until the now improved creatures tear those who are resisting the foundation to shreds. Ooh, death by chocolate. Well, death by swarms of anomalous anthropods emerging from a chocolate fountain, but that just doesn't sound as good. Either way, that is a sweet victory. John Ree 18 said, So if the goal is, as I understand it, to wipe out the entire human race without using reality warping SCPs of any kind, there are a number of options to choose from. First, I'd start with SCP-2419 and let loose the thousands of unliving D-Class who have had every trace of humanity wiped from their souls. They should be more than eager to rack up as high a body count as possible. Then I'd use SCPs capable of targeting specific areas or population centers like SCP-923, a satellite whose rays drive people into a murderous rage, or SCP-2617, a Russian radio tower that can summon an army of ice soldiers to exterminate anything within a pre-programmed set of coordinates. Also, while there is no shortage of bloodthirsty SCPs out there, including SCP-082, aka Ferdinand the Cannibal, or SCP-953, the polymorphic humanoid, I'd start with a bigger gun. SCP-353, aka Vector, is a 26-year-old girl with the ability to absorb, contain, manipulate, and release viruses as she pleases. She also happens to delight in killing as many people as she can so I have a feeling she'd be more than happy to help, even against other agencies out to combat the Foundation. I may have been thinking about this for a while. You don't say. Thank you, John Ree, for one of the most in-depth and terrifying responses to our prompt. And on behalf of humanity, thank you for channeling this energy into SCP-related pursuits instead of bringing about the actual apocalypse. Between the Laughing Men, the Rogue Satellite, the Russian Radio Tower, and Vector, humanity and the dark passenger that dwells deep within every human psyche doesn't stand a chance. Now go check out SCP-5000-Y, the full story compilation, and how SCP-682 tried to stop SCP-5000 for more.